So let's do a force diagram. And we're going to start out with the simplest one, box falling. My recommendation for any problem that you're ever doing is first draw the problem. That's a box and it is falling. Now we're going to ignore air resistance. If you notice that previous video, I did not mention air. Air resistance becomes incredibly complicated, so I'm happily, happy to leave that for the engineers. Uh, the streams right there to indicate that it's falling, it, which would obviously be ripples in the air, but we're ignoring air, so it's just a symbol to represent it's falling. The first step whenever doing these problems is to now draw them separated. Now in this case, they are already separated, but just because I'm developing a style, a method, I'm gonna draw my box and I'm gonna draw the ground. These hash marks are to indicate something that is sort of fixed. So in this reference frame, the ground is fixed. Now, we have a checklist here, F Tong, or if you're in the 110 class, be F Town, and instead of a G, a W for weight, and instead of G for gravitational force. But weight is a gravitational force. So, friction requires another object in contact. There's no contact, so friction is gone. Tension requires a tight rope, no tight rope. Other requires a mysterious force thrown into the problem, and there is no mysterious force thrown into the problem, so no other. Normal force requires contact. Gravitational force requires a planet and an object for weight, and there is. So, the ground is pulling down on the box. So if I can express it like that, that tells me exactly how to draw the arrow. The ground pulls down on the box, so I draw my arrow down on the box. I label it as W. But they come in pairs, so there's got to be another one. Well, there's one coming up from the ground. If the ground pulls down on the box, the box pulls up on the ground. They're pulling towards each other. It's a mutual attraction. Physics does not play favorites, or forces don't play favorites. The fact that there's no reason why the planet should have any preference over the box, and so we can also treat it as boxes pulling up on the Earth. Now, they'll react differently to the pulls because the Earth is so huge, this force doesn't really do a whole lot. Depending on the size of the box, you might move the, the Earth, basically the dis, distance of, uh, you know, on the order of magnitude of the size of a nucleus. So not very far. But the box being much smaller mass is much, has much greater impact. I do want to point out that these two forces are, have the exact same magnitude. And so the force up, the force down. So for in my case, the, my weight is about 215 pounds. And so I'm pulling up on the earth with 215 pounds. Technically, the arrows should be exactly the same length. Now, because of drawing issues, I symbolize that they are the same, same magnitude by putting the same symbol here. So that's the first force diagram. Now, some rookie mistakes. The Mr. Yuck sticker. Wrong cover, but sure. Rookie mistakes, no man's land. I have seen this way too many times where you've got ground, you've got box, and then people draw the arrows in the middle. I have no idea what the person intends. Now, sometimes there's a hint. Sometimes I can sort of guess which one they intend to be on which, which one, but this is, don't do that. Another one is force on source, not recipient or receiver. Since forces require two, force, two objects, one is the source of the force and one is the receiver. So for example, this force right here, the box is the receiver of the force, the ground is the source. Down here, the earth or ground is the receiver and the box is the source. So sometimes people get it backwards. They say, well, the box is pulling up on the earth and so they draw, do the following mistake. Yeah, another rookie mistake right there. Don't do that. And we will hit other rookie mistakes as we go. 
So that is box folly. Let's go to the next complication, a box on ground. So I start out drawing the picture and I put the box on it. So that is the problem. And so now we are going to do our force diagram here. I am not claiming the boxes in the air. All I'm doing is just drawing the box and I'm drawing the ground. I happen to draw them in the same orientation they have here. I have box on top of overground. I have box over ground here. I could draw it the other way around, but this one's a little bit easier. Uh, to me, it's easier when you're actually doing the diagrams. We have our checklist. So first let's talk about friction. Now the question is, if this ground were frictionless, would the box slide one way or the other? Well, if there's any slope at all to the, the ground, yes it will, but that's not the intent. I'm not going to play the game of, oh, I can't believe you missed that it was at a one degree angle. Now if I want it to be at a, an angle, then I will either state it explicitly or I will draw it explicitly. So if it looks like I meant to draw it level, it's level. On a quiz or test with me, please ask if you're not sure. So friction, there is no friction because even though there's contact, requirement number one, there's no desired motion. If this were frictionless, the box would have no weight. The box doesn't have any particular direction in which to move. Tension, there's no tight rope, chain, anything like that. Other, I did not introduce anything into the problem. Normal force, yes, and weight. So let's do weight first, because I always find weight is the simplest. I have the large object here, ground representing the planet or moon, and then I have the box, and they're attracted towards each other, similar to what we did before. I have weight acting down there, and I have the same magnitude of weight acting up there. But the box is not falling. So, so that's, I have only one small object besides the planet, besides the planet, so gravitational force, done. Normal force. The box is not falling. If suddenly there was a cave in here, the box would fall, so there's something holding it up. And so that is the normal force. It is a support force. It keeps one object from going through another. For instance, right now, there's a normal force on me from the floor because it's the, I'm not falling through the floor. The force is holding me up. That is what we're calling a normal force. And so there's this force upwards and then a force downwards. If you're walking in the dirt and you leave footprints behind, it's this force right here which leaves the footprints. That's the second force diagram.